Australian studio and Phil <laughs> Evans. Please like our page, and if you know any actors who are interested in learning something profound, our, everybody you know who's either an actor or interested in acting, they're not going to want to miss this. Our guest is Phyllis Carlisle. While Ralph Waldo Emerson said, do not, where the, do not go where the path may lead, go instead where there is no path and leave a trail. That sums up Phyllis Carla. She is the original manager producer and she blazed a trail combining those skills. You may have heard of some of the little films she produced, <laughs> Accidental Tourist, Seven, you may have heard of some of the actors she's managed. Andy Garcia, John Malkovich, Willem Dafoe. So she's had a bit of success. <laughs> <laughs> and has a story to tell. Her life, her insight. She has taken a self-imposed hiatus. And we are meeting with her at the moment of her return. She is closing on a major financing deal. She's back to producing, and if I have my way, she'll also be back to managing actors. <laughs> because I know some really talented actors <laughs> who produce some really great representation. But we are all here to learn from you, and we're honored to have you, and I'm honored also to have you as my dear friend. Oh, well, so you. welcome, Phyllis Carlisle. <laughs> Also be taking questions from Facebook as well as from our live audience. So again, go to our page, like us, tell your friends, and send in your questions online, and I will receive them from Becky and Ian, my social media mavens over here, <laughs> and I will uh, relay the questions. First question is your story, Phyllis. How did it all begin? Well, I think for me, it began, my father was part of um, the big band era. And so we had a, an orchestra and when I was three weeks old, I went on the road. So I, so I, I, I think I could be categorized as always on a band bus. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that's how I grew up. I mean, um, until I started school at the age of seven, I, I was on a band bus doing one-nighters with musicians living in hotels. So that's kind of the beginning, which really is, I think, significant simply because uh, for me, it, it's probably what instilled my love for, you know, the circus. <laughs> 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 and, and so, I, you know, as, as I got older, when I was 10, when I was seven, we got, I got off the road with my mother and I obviously started going to normal schools. Uh, by the time I was 10, I was kind of bored with that. So I, I joined the uh, Cleveland Playhouse uh, as an acting student. And uh, it was a thing called the Curtain Pullers and they were the young kids, right? And so I was there for several years and so I think to, to kick off m my story, um, I started by wanting to be an actor. And for many, many years, I studied acting. So um, from, the, from Cleveland, I moved to New York and studied at the American Academy of uh, Dramatic Arts. I did some plays, I did, you know, little, little things. Nothing, nothing significant because by the time I was 19 or 20, I started to get very freaked out over acting. It was a really emotional kind of reaction to it. And I went back to Cleveland, I got married, uh, I moved to Chicago, I got divorced. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, All that sources. <laughs> and in Chicago, I started to find, um, I'm going to speed this story up by the way, and then in Chicago I started to find, uh, uh, I worked in a dress shop and I was in, uh, went back to acting school with a guy named Ted Liss, and uh, in the midst of all of that I got a call one day 
uh, asking me if I would be willing to take over a talent agency that was actually completely defunct. And I did know the man that had owned it and we were kind of friends and he had died and his widow actually wanted me to come in and I have no idea why, I'd never done anything like this. But uh, long story short, I walked in the door, the, um, the files were debunked, nothing was real, and I fell in love. <laughs> <laughs> and for me, it kind of went from there. You know, I started to really get into representation, um, using my own instincts to sort of source out who I thought or what I thought about others. And I think, too, just to go back to my dad for a second, I watched him and his life, and the one thing that was always missing was that one person who could help them, who could really be there as that, that support system that I, I do not think agents typically provide. I mean, someone here may have the exception, and I acknowledge that, but typically you don't get it. And prior to management becoming a... Uh, it wasn't a thing when you started. No, no, not at all. I mean, I, <laughs> um, I mean, I started managing because I'd grown up in the music business, and managers existed in the music business and for comedians. They did not exist for actors. Um, but I didn't know that particularly. You know, I, you know, naivete is a great thing sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and so I just thought, well, you know, what I really want to do is produce, and so what I'll do. <laughs> is I'll, at the time I had a commercial casting business. I was casting a lot of commercials in LA. And I thought, well, I'll just pick people from the commercial pool because they're usually, you know, one step away from getting into the theatrical world or they're in it and, not, and haven't happened yet. And, um, and so I'll, I'll take, uh, I'll, I'll pick people from my casting world and I'll manage them. <laughs> and, but I, and you basically I, invented it. I didn't know you, that it that, that didn't it, exist. I didn't know that. <laughs> so, 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 but I did know about management because of music, and so that's what I did. And I started to, you know, I mean, I knew the people I liked calling in for auditions, and and uh, because uh, they were good, and then I would notice that the people I liked the most were going off and getting shows and stuff. And I would lose them to my, you know, my own ability to bring them in. So I thought, well, then I'll just pick the people I think I like, and I'll talk to them, and I'll see if they want management. <laughs> so actually, that's how it all started. And um, I also had to learn uh, who the buyers were <laughs> and uh, develop relationships with them, but the talent actually triggered some of that because, um, you know, I, as I think back on it, I don't really know how I did it because uh, I didn't know anybody here. But it, it worked out. So um, for the reasons that I'm stating, the people that I managed had no real, they didn't have a lot of credentials or background. And so, you know, I was building people from scratch as opposed to taking people that were already... How uh, did you do that? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I really don't. You know that thing when you go on stage and then the play's over and you don't remember anything you did? Well, that's what it was like. <laughs> I remember working very hard. That's about it. You did. What did you look for in town? What do you look for? You know that's a that's a that's an interesting question only because there's no real definitive answer to that. Um, what I look for is what rings my bell. You know, I, I, I'll tell you a very quick little story, uh, which I think is an indicator of of what I'm talking about. I had a client named Stephen Bauer. And he was doing, we had worked for months and months and months to get him a movie called Scarface. And he was, he was acting opposite uh, Pacino. And one day, and, 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 and Stephen had a friend from their Cuban, though they were all from Miami. And uh, he had a friend that came into town who was 
I laugh every time I think about this, a stand-up comedian, and his name was Andy Garcia. <laughs> and and uh, he was just hanging around, you know. He was sitting there hanging around, and he asked me a question every now and then, and he was Stephen's buddy. And one day, uh, I was visiting the set, and Stephen said, uh, Al and I are gonna go play um, um, a racquetball, and uh, Andy's gonna come, and." I, and so Stephen at the time was married to Melanie Griffith, so Melanie and I went over to sit wherever you sit and watch them play racquetball. <laughs> and, <laughs> and we had Stephen Bauer on the court, and we had Al Pacino, and I was watching Andy Garcia. I thought, wow, why am I watching him? And I thought, you know, if I'm watching him, I better sign him. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, and, that, and so it's an instinct, it's a feeling, it's a... Um, I think, I think the right connection is about connection. And so if you feel it, they're probably gonna feel it back. Right. So. In Facebook world, write in your questions for Phyllis Carlisle, manager producer. Like our Facebook page and spread the word because there's a lot of great information coming. I wanna say one more thing. Please. <laughs> the, 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 I, you know, I always said that vulnerability and uh, and, 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 a, and a sensuality uh, and a likability factor, I think, are three things I look for. And that is... Just to get more specific. Thank you. That's very well said. If I read your question and you're here, please stand. David Gorrell. I am here. Okay. In the past year and a half, I've recurred on two network shows, had the lead in one film, and supporting roles in three others, <laughs> mostly through my own relationships. How do I get the attention of representation at the next level up? Hmm. <laughs> uh, do, you, do, you have, do you have the film from what you've done? I do. Um, that used to be, you know, part of being able to show the work right. is, 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 is certainly part of what you have to do. How you get them to look <laughs> is obviously your question. Um, I think you need a manager <laughs> because because that's how. Do you know anyone? <laughs> because that's how uh, I am officially not managing yet. <laughs> By the end of this, she said yet. <laughs> By the end of this conversation, we'll see. Howard's you know, talking to me a lot. <laughs> so. so so anyway, I think you need that person I'm talking about. And it doesn't have to be a manager, it could be your cousin for all. For all. Right. But that it is key to have someone who can help you break down the barriers and teach you how to walk through them. So I would say, go to the, try and go to some of the, and, and if you feel like, you know, maybe, um, 360 isn't the right start place to start, find a smaller company that does take people that they can nurture and bring along more. And I would say, you know, try and find that situation for yourself. Okay. The agencies are tough. Yeah. So no. find somebody that's willing to fight the fight with you. Thank you. Great. Uh, Victor Wang, where are you? Victor, <laughs> extend up. Uh, what's the best process for discovering and researching managers? When you're a young actor, how often should one jump to another more established manager to climb the ladder of their abilities and contacts? Well, wait, there's two questions yeah, there? Sorry. Okay. <laughs> uh, how do you find managers? Well, I mean, I think you're still having workshop and things that they can come to, right? We have open classes here, yeah. theoretically. That I mean, it, it, there's a variety of answers to that. I mean, you know, you're in a situation where Howard brings people in, Howard can, can have them see your work, your scenes. I don't know if you do showcase things We don't anymore. do that, but we uh, do have open classes. Um, there's certainly theater. I mean, I don't think LA is known for its theater, but there is theater, there's the Odyssey, there's places you can go where you can, you can be in something and then you invite people to come and see it. You, you know, you can research. It's not that difficult to know. I mean, I think actors know who the 
management companies are. You all talk to each other a lot and you exchange information. You can certainly go online and look to see who's there and then try and uh, source their credibility. Um, <clears throat> but I think, I think there's, there's a, 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 a cumulative effect by you being in workshops, theater, trying to get film, that goes back, film, um, uh, pieces of film you can show, and, and literally um, just keep pounding on the doors, you know? Sometimes, you, you know, there's once in a while there's open calls, uh, if it's something legit, you know, just there's a variety of ways you can go about being seen, and being seen is the goal. What was the second question? Uh, should you change trying to climb the ladder, changing manager, changing representation? Uh, that's a, I have very mixed feelings about that question because I'm, I'm, I tend to be a very loyal type. And so I've never liked the, the, jump, the jump ship thing the minute you think you have a little bit of, um, of uh, currency <clears throat> because uh, often you're just going into a huge pool of a lot of people and there isn't that person that nurtured you and cared about you there. It's just somebody trying to sign somebody because they've gotten a notice or something good's going on. And that doesn't mean that they're going to care about you. It doesn't mean they're going to stay consistent. So I think you have to be, I'm going to say the same thing over and over and over. It's about that person who gets you, who understands you, who will support you, and who will try and break down the doors for you. And wherever you find that person, don't leave them so easily. Thank you. We will take also questions from Facebook world. Please go to our page, like us, tell your friends, send in questions for the great Phyllis Carlisle. That's a little scary. You know? It is a little scary, but we're not scary people. So you mean people out there are going to ask questions? Yes, yeah. they are. They're going to send them in. Uh, who are they sending them to? To Ian and Becky, who will then give them to us and Natalie. Okay. Phyllis headshots. Are headshots still important, and what makes a good headshot? Uh, the ha the, well, I think the way that headshots are viewed has changed because you, a lot of that's starting to go online now. I mean, I've read recently that there's new companies starting and I think breakdown services are now becoming a little obsolete. And so there's a real changing over that's going on in terms of the internet. Uh, but at the end of the day, they've got to see you. It might be a film that's online, it might be your headshot, but you got to have a headshot. I mean, you can't do without it. So yes, you have to have one. And what makes a good headshot? You, it, it, it reflects you, the essence of so you. So it has to be current. Yeah, it has to be current, obviously. And it has to, uh, <laughs> and it has, and it's not a dating service. <laughs> <laughs> that might be coming. <laughs> so, but, it, <clears throat> but I think a lot of times what I see in pictures and what I see a young, particularly younger actors trying to do is pose and have some sort of very heavy duty message and, <laughs> and uh, uh, looking like they could do Hamlet any second you call them. <laughs> and, and I think that that's really not what, the, what anyone looks for. I think it's something natural, something a good photographer knows how to capture that moment of you. And that's what, that's what you're trying for. What do you, I, go ahead. I always say, you know, crank up some music, don't pose, just sit there with the photographer and let him shoot. Okay. Yeah. Resumes, are there do's and don'ts? Well, I am a big believer they should be honest. <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of them aren't. <laughs> um, and I think, you know, they should genuinely reflect the work you've done. Special skills, does that ever interest well, you? Well, sometimes the special skills are funny, you know, because they go on and on, and you know, by the time you're done, it's a renaissance person. <laughs> but I think, I think you know, if you, I would make it really 
whatever, if you do have a special skill, make it a real special skill, you know. I roller skate on my head at noon. <laughs> <laughs> Again, please like our page. Please send in questions for the great Phyllis Carlisle. Here's one from someone in our audience. It's from Hayward Scott. Okay. I'm not young. <laughs> I'm at a point where I need to be creating my own content and make use of things such as YouTube. I'm working on a short film, but in the short term. How do I create a brand and maintain some semblance of dignity? Boy. <laughs> you know, I, I have the same question. <laughs> um, oh, wow. I'm not going to say this necessarily applies to you because I, I don't know you. Obviously. But I am going to say something that could apply to you. Um, Creativity and, and, and that, you know, I mean, that's what makes a good cook. That's what makes a lot of different things. And um, sometimes I think, and you see this in actors that are extremely successful, as they're getting older, you see them diversifying. You see them starting to direct. You see them producing. You see them doing a lot of different things. And the, and the one thing that, uh, I mean, I, I believe very heavily in is the use of their creativity. And so perhaps brand is the key word to your question, and that, that means that maybe as a creative person that wants to brand themselves, you look into all the different ways you can do that, not just acting. You know, and it, the truth is sometimes if you create uh, a situation you can step into, you know, and, 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 and I understand that's complicated, and I'm not saying, oh, everybody go start your own production company so you can star in your own movies. But I am saying that uh, uh, working with other people, finding ways to make who you are and your creativity heard in more ways than one, I would, I would say take a good look at that too. Okay, good. Thank you. This is from Jai Prashkolnik. Where is Jai? There she is. Okay. What is, this is a few questions. What is the best thing a young actor can do to further their career? What is the most detrimental thing they can do? How beneficial is networking? Really they ask heavy duty questions. Yeah, no, they're not messing around. Well, the best thing you can do to further your career is, is uh, um, uh, understand yourself and what you do best. And just keep working on it. I think there's a consistency to this world we're all in. And whether you're an actor or a producer or a director, or, you have to stay diligent. You, intention is extremely important. And, and uh, staying very true to yourself. What's the most detrimental thing a young actor can do? Not doing any of that. <laughs> <laughs> and how beneficial is networking, such as parties? And uh, well, I mean, it's Hollywood, so I mean, you can't ignore it. it. I mean, you can't say it doesn't have a place, but it certainly isn't the core of who you should be and what you should be about. Um, I think. Networking for somebody, someone like uh, like a, a producer or uh, uh, an agent might be more beneficial than maybe a, as an actor, and that's why you need those people in your life because they've been networking, and they can be helpful. Um, actors can sometimes come across a little bit obnoxious. If they're, if they're too busy networking, if you, if you know what I mean by that, because uh, you don't want to constantly be in people's faces trying to promote yourself. I think that's um, usually that's a turn off. Is social media a tool that they can use to promote themselves? I think it is. I mean, don't ask me to expound on that because I'm not. I'm not that knowledgeable about social media. I sort of, I'm kind of afraid of it. But um, uh, no question. I mean, I think when you you think about the um, 
the way casting people are now looking at the talent, particularly, I would say obviously that's important. Um, and I suppose there's little things you could do, you know, perhaps, if it's really good. I mean, you know, you hear about people like Justin Bieber and all these people that did some sort of little song and dance and all of a sudden, you know, they were huge stars. So it's got to work on some level. So I think, you, yeah, I think yes, the answer is yes. What should they look for in a manager? Because now anybody can hang out a shingle and say I'm a manager. Well, that was always true. I, I guess I'm going to say the same thing. Um, you, first of all, they have to be legit. They have to actually be able to do something for you. After that, it's the person who gets you. But how will they find that out? Internet or IMDb? Or... How do they meet managers? Well, would they want? Yeah, that's a question that that is here as well. But it's also when they are looking. How can they verify somebody's credentials to who they represent, or, or how would, would you do that? Well, I think there's there's uh, there's there. I think there are. You know, um, you can call. Not, it's not like the the Better Bureau of the, <laughs> but there's something. You know, there's something you can call and find out the legitimacy. I mean, you, somebody's got to know somebody in the industry. You know, even if it's a, an assistant. To somebody, I mean, use your contacts to, to explore and look at who somebody is and what they've done. You can certainly look up their uh, resumes. Their, you can certainly look them up, see what's online about them, talk to the people you know and see what they know about them. Um, I think I think you know it's a normal sort of hunting and. And do you think they need both a, an agent and a manager right from the beginning? <laughs> Maybe. Depends. In your producer hat, when you're watching an audition, what are the do's and don'ts for you? And same, I guess, as a manager sending somebody out. <laughs> I think most people lose their job before they audition. I think I'm going to want to hear what. <laughs> <laughs> it's the way you walk into a room. It's how you handle yourself. Um, example: If you flub a line, what you do about that and how you handle that. There's a, there's a, the the one thing I think an actor needs to know is that one of the things people are looking for in an audition is somebody that if they cast you, uh, there are millions of dollars <laughs> are not going to be lost because you're somehow not a professional. So, uh, so there's, a, there's, a, there's an ease that a professional has. And I think when you're sitting in a room looking at actors, you, you sense that, you feel that. Um, I, I have sometimes been in a room where somebody makes a mistake or they and they don't recover in an easy kind of way. They go, oh, oh, can I can I do that again? Do you mind if I this? Do you blah, blah, blah? no? If it's sort of like ah, let me take that again. So there's stay a little bit in control. Don't don't over talk it. Don't overdo it. Just you know, the, and at the end, you know, if somebody says, and then the, the other thing actors do is, well, you know, I can do it another way. I mean, I can do it a lot of different ways. Would you like to see me do it some more? <laughs> and the answer is going to be probably no. So not because they don't like you or they like you. It doesn't mean anything. It just means they've seen what they needed to see for them. For them. So don't overdo it. I'm just saying ease, an ease, a little humor sometimes is nice. It shows you can handle pressure. Absolutely. <clears throat> As a manager, and you, you've worked hard to get an appointment for someone, what do you expect in terms of their preparation? Oh. Well, <clears throat> first, a lot of times, um, I mean, there's a different there's a difference between an audition that comes up and you have 24 hours to prepare for it, and something, for example, that you're after, that you 
may have been chasing for a month, a month and a half, you know. Uh, uh, I brought up Scar's Pace before, and, and that was a case in point. It took us four months to, and about five auditions for Stephen to finally get that part. So, so the 24 hour audition, I, you know, do the best you can to know as much as you can about what that is. I mean, if you haven't seen the show, it's TV. Watch the show. Get get some information. Don't just take a, some sides and you know try and sort of blindly you know work your way through it. Information, 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 so that you can then apply what you need to apply as an actor to try and deliver the part. Uh, if it's the longer process and a career breaking. Uh, moment, um, wow, I mean, there's a lot that goes into that. Mostly just stay sane. <laughs> <laughs> Please go to our Facebook page, like us on Facebook, send in your questions, tell your friends to tune in, and these are from Facebook. Okay. This is from Alex Slessers. Yeah. Hi, Alex. <laughs> now, is that Facebook or is it? It's Facebook, but he's a, But he's here. Uh, he's not in the room. Oh. No. But he's, oh. his presence is being felt. Alex. Okay. <laughs> uh, number one, talking. how important is a first impression in finding talent? Let's answer that first. Uh, for me, it's very important. Um, you know. Ayn Rand said something once in a book that I that, that has stayed with me my whole life, and 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 it's that you actually know everything you need to know about somebody in the first thirty seconds, and you spend the rest of the time you know them, learning you were right. <laughs> I'm digesting that, <laughs> and I actually kind of believe that. I think that's true. Thank you for that question, Alex. The second part of the question is, do you generally know who has, quote unquote, it, just by being in their presence or seeing their real, or have people been able to sway you over time? I think I know. There, there's been a couple of times that I thought somebody was one thing and they turned out to be another, but they still had it. Um, Sandra Bullock was dating a client of mine, very young. I thought she was going to be a huge television star. Facebook gives us a thumbs up, please. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm getting so good at okay. <laughs> Social media. Okay. <laughs> This is from Burke Becker. Are hard copy submissions to managers still a good means of getting represented in the age of internet and online breakdown services? I don't think it's the most effective way to know. Yasha Fairley. Phyllis, what was the most important lesson you learned that had a possible impact on your career? Hmm. Oh. <laughs> I don't know if I should answer that, Howard. <laughs> um, I, I think um, who to trust and not trust. Let's leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it goes to, to reading people and, right? And well, you're not just dealing with people. You're dealing with studios and networks and people like that. <laughs> <clears throat> Mickey Yamashita, she's in the front there. How often do you attend live theater, and how important to you are theater credits on a resume when deciding to meet or and or sign a prospective client? I'm a big theater person, so I believe in it a lot. Um, There's me. I have. I can't see anybody. In there. I know. <laughs> I have. Uh, uh, in my professional life, gone to a lot of theater in London, New York. I've been to more off Broadway, Chicago theater, and a lot of some of it was very rewarding. I'm talking about the off, off. Um, so.
So I, I think it's, I think it's, it is important to me. Is it a deal breaker? No. Thank you. Thank you. Facebook, please go to our page, like us, give us a thumbs up, give us hearts. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> please, we want to be popular. We really do. Okay. This is from Facebook, from Lindsay Ahrens. With the popularity and explosion of social media, how do you feel about actors trying to create their own projects? Who am I to say you can't? Um, I think it's actually a decent idea. Is, so in, in terms of needing film, which is what a lot of people want and, yeah. and want to see, yeah. What are some of the ways they can, if they haven't done network or films, what, how can they get tape on themselves that somebody might recognize? Well, there's a lot of, you know, I, I, I've been thinking about this lately for my own reasons. Um, for example, a lot of uh, um, film students at the colleges do films. Uh, being able to sort of register with the agencies where, that actually help supply actors to the film students. Um, I think in today's world, I mean, you could create your own little audition, your own little film. I mean, it just has to be good, <laughs> you know? So, uh, you know, again, you know, you, you see every year about this crop of people that, uh, that crop up that uh, did a, something on the internet and somebody saw it and they started to, uh, I mean, years ago, I don't know how many, maybe 10, a little longer probably. I wanted to do, uh, it was called Hollywood to You. And I wanted to do uh, a talent search online. I was, I was just a little early uh, and people didn't quite understand what- You were right, as with most things, you were right but, uh, at the but, beginning. Uh, it was I, even earlier than that, I think. It, uh, but was, I still- Internet do, was brand new and you had that idea. And I said, let's, let's, you know, because I was interested to see was out there. I thought, oh, this is amazing. I can start to look and see people from everywhere if you utilize this correctly. So I, I was very interested in that, and I still am, and I think that that's a very important tool. Just use it correctly. This is from Darren Charles. Yeah. Oh, uh, from the manager perspective, what is the most effective way a talent can reach you to begin a professional relationship by you and an any manager? <laughs> you can't reach me. <laughs> um, well, well, look, I mean, you know, nobody's sitting there waiting for you. That's for sure. And yet they are. <laughs> so how do you, how do you work, how do you get in the, how do you get into that space? Um, We've talked a lot about how you get film. We've talked a lot about how you break down some doors. Um, and there is no one way. I mean, there, you know, there's your way. There's the way that you have a friend who knows a thing, and, and, or there's I put these tapes together, I'm gonna put them online, and I'm gonna have somebody. I'm gonna try and get, even if it's a, an assistant, to look at it at an agency or a management company that they could then whisper in the ear of. I mean, it's just keep trying. That's all I can say because it's not, uh, if it's an agent, try and get a small manager that'll help break down the doors, um, do a play, invite people, um, make calls. I mean, you know, you know, sometimes, I mean, I have a relative that called a bunch of agents and he, he actually got seen. In fact, that one of them. In fact, I, one of them took him. <laughs> Just by making those calls. Yeah. And that's Darren. Right there. There he is. Thank you. Thank you. So well, I think you just have to try everything, really. Please go to our Facebook page. Please give us likes and hearts. Please love us. Please spread the word. Send in questions for the great Phyllis Carlisle. And one of mine for you is. What's a healthy relationship with manager in terms of, and also with agent, 
they want to make sure they're on your mind, they're in contact, but they don't want to be too yeah. obnoxious. Yeah. Is there a balance there? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, I think if you, if, if you've got to know when you're overdoing it. I mean, you've just, you know, you've got to. I mean, I, one of the questions that I got a lot was, uh, when should I, when should I go over and see my agent and when should I call my agent? Because, you know, we were sort of the tool to, to keep things moving. So the, the contact with the agent wasn't as much. And yet at the same time, the fear was, will they remember me? And uh, so I think, I think it's like any relationship. If you, if you, if you, on somebody all the time, you're, they're going to pull away. It's just the way it is. Nobody, nobody likes that. At the same time, if you go away for six months, they may not think too much about you. So you have to find the right balance of, usually if it's a legitimate reason, uh, not fabrication or uh, neuroses, that's motivating your uh, call, your trying to be in contact, that will play very well. What are some of the areas that a manager might get into with a client that you think are legitimate? Do they include hairstyle, wardrobe, uh, marketing thoughts? What, what, are you, what are some of the areas managers can I did. Do? I did everything like that. I mean, I was, I was very, um, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, if I could have made the dress, I would have. <laughs> <laughs> the hair, the makeup, the pictures, the, pu the publicity, I was involved in all of it. I didn't want anybody else to be, I mean, this is not going to sound terribly nice, but somebody asked me once, wh who do you think your best agent is? I said, the one that does what I want them to. <laughs> <laughs> Do you interact differently with the large, or did you when you were managing, with the larger agencies or the middle ones, or, or even as a producer? Did I, in, did I interact? With them? Yeah, but interact even differently with them. Whereas, in the larger agencies, maybe one person is covering one studio, or in smaller right, agencies, right. they're they're doing yes. everything. Do you have a preference? Uh, I, I'm not sure. With the we hear a lot about A, B, C, where an actor should be. This agency is too big for them. Oh, okay, I understand. Um, yeah, I do have a, yes, I think you should be with the agent that pays attention to you. And is it true that until they have enough credits they can get lost at a larger agency? Absolutely. In fact, the chances are you can bet on it. That's valuable information for a lot of people out here. So they're better with a smaller agency that where everybody knows them is working for them. I think so. Okay, great. And and if you do also have a manager, obviously that person is helping keep the ball rolling no matter where you are. If you have a manager that has a great relationship with at a larger agency and they keep you in, and they can. Uh, um, manage the agency really because that that's 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 incredibly important as well uh, you have to understand in a large agency you've got people that are they're all in charge of different things and so if you're if you have a specific agent that's your primary principal agent that doesn't mean that they're going to even know what's going on with something you could be late for and that's what I mean so it so the small the smaller but but good agent has to know more just by the very nature of uh, their size and, and uh, the need that their clients have. Right. Please go to our Facebook page. Please give us likes, hearts, and hit the share button. <laughs> we will take questions for Phyllis Carlisle. I know. Well, I'm getting little notes from Becky and Ian. And <laughs> hit the share button. What does that mean? It means that when they go on, they share this talk with other people. Oh. It means we're being passed around, Phyllis. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would be a first. <laughs> <laughs> this is... <laughs> um, professional. Professional.
Uh, this is from Shay Depmore. There is Shay. Is there something in particular you look for in a project before you decide to produce it? Asking as a self-producing actor. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think so. And then I, I look for emotion, feeling, something true, something real that people can relate to. Okay. This is from Ra Johnson. Where's Ra? Oh, okay. there he is. Okay. You spoke to what drew you to certain actors. What draws you in with respect to a production? Script, talent, packaging? Well, in my, in my situation, I, 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 you know, we, we've put everything together that we've done. So, um, I, you know, the packages are usually uh, an agent's dealings. I mean, they do that. Um, and they have their own reasons for their package, and some of it could make a lot of sense, and some of it doesn't. Um, but in my case, we, you know, again, we always built it from scratch. Found the book, found the script, worked on the script for a year or two years, you know, tried to get somebody to see it, look at it, I hope, you know. I mean, Seven took five years for, uh, we were turned down by everybody at least twice. And uh, I finally, and I have a, we, won't, we don't have to elaborate on any of this, but I, I have a particular love for Europe and the global uh, aspect of filmmaking and acting. And, and so uh, finally we got an Italian company to finance the development. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and, and then it just, once we got it developed, it started to snowball a little bit. And it eventually did get made, but not, I mean, we ended up at New Line uh, after after we had finished developing the script, and I had uh, Brad Pitt interested in it, and so at that point we were already on a roll. I didn't even want to go to the studio. Truth, I wanted. I had some German money. I wanted. <laughs> but, in, but in any case, you know, I, I would say, uh, you know, I like the idea of building it from scratch. But was it the script that initially kind of pulled you in? Yeah, or? that first draft. We got it on the first draft, and the first draft was amazing. It really was. For, and sometimes, you know, not often. Not often, but sometimes. Thank you. Let's take some more questions. Excellent, thank you. Oh, this is from Australia. <laughs> I, Dean Frywood in Australia. For the Australians watching, only agents in Australia could explain how your approach to managing differs from what agents do. Only agent, could you explain how your approach to managing differs from what agents do? Because Australians don't. Well, I'm going to start with I haven't managed for, for four years or so, five years. <clears throat> <laughs> and uh, so, no, but I, I, I bring that up because uh, my, my focus has been more on raising money and production. Uh, so I bring that up because I think everything changes every 30 seconds. So uh, I, I will say that in my experience, um, agencies are a different kind of business than what an actor needs to de be developed and to have support and to have somebody actually fighting for them. And that can, that's all encompassing. I mean, that can be for a part, that can be um, somebody thinks you're a villain and you can actually be a leading man and you have to fight that fight. I mean, it goes on and on, there's lots of fights. And um, uh, so, so my own personal belief is that in an agency, cares about packaging, they care about a certain fee structure more than they do necessarily the individual, unless the individual has become, you know, um, a huge star, then of course they're gonna get treated uh, differently. But so I believe that the agencies are about big business and I believe that the manager is more about your business. Our, this is from Madeline Rosak. 
Are there skills besides the, the training that they obviously have had here that the actors need to have in place before seeking representation? Example, headshot, resume, should they be SAG already? Yeah, I mean, obviously the tools of your trade. <laughs> you know, you need them. A lot of the students get asked in their interviews with agents managers, what type are you, know your type, and I know in your own history, representing John Malkovich, <laughs> liaison donjurers. No, that was, a, that was a battle. And so should they accept the, that I'm a type and this is what I play, or should they fight that? Uh, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, like for example, I don't know if any of you watch Berlin Station. Anyone here watch Berlin Station? Well, you should. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ber Berlin Station has, uh, uh, Tony, what's the name of that actor? Uh, Riz Eisen. Yeah, he's British. And when I first saw him, and I mean, to me, he was a character actor. Because you saw him in Notting Hill, and you saw him being this goofy uh, 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 flatmate to Hugh Grant. And he was silly and goofy. And when you watch him in, now I know actors can do different things, so that's not my point. But when you see him in Berlin Station, he's lethal. He has a Belmondo kind of seething mm -hmm. sensuality and danger. And he's interesting. And you think, oh, my God. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know? So what I, so no, I don't think think you can automatically typecast somebody or say you're a character or you're good look. But then you know you've got Danny DeVito. And it would be hard, I'd be hard put to see him as a leading man, even though I'm told that women find him very sexy, that know him. So I, I, what do I know? <laughs> <laughs> so no, I think you have to understand, look, I think you have to understand you know, character actors all want to be leading men, and leading men all want to be character actors. That's just the way it is. And so, uh, if you take that and work off of that, you know, you'll see. It'll, it'll, it will. I don't think you should t fight against type in the beginning. You've got to get started. So, you know, you've got enough battles to fight. Don't take that one on. Maybe later for that. We have a number of international students here from all over the world, what should they achieve in terms of their English? Should they try to get rid of their accent completely? The Australians, for example, are able to do an American accent. Americans cannot do Australian. <laughs> They're very bad at it. Well, the English and the Australians are astounding. They really are. Did you hear that, our studio in Australia? <laughs> oh, right. I forgot about you. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're, they're astounding. I mean, I, I, you know, and the Germans. The Germans can get rid of their, their accents somewhat easily, too. I think other Latins, there are other, there are other cultures that have a more difficult time of it. So do you think, how is it necessary to get to a standard American or simply to be really clear? Should they try to be the boy or girl next door or accept the fact that they're unique? Well, you have to accept your uniqueness <coughs> because that's the only thing that's ever going to be different about you, you know? I mean, I, I'm a huge believer in don't try and be other things. Be you and let that carry through in terms of how you approach everything and create your eye. <laughs> so, so, so definitely, you have to stay true to yourself. You know, definitely. Um, so, as, as long as their English is clear. Look, you're, if you're in if you're in America, ninety nine percent of the parts are going to be English. I mean, American speaking. Right. So, yeah, I mean, it's very important. Great. Let's take some questions from some people here who haven't written them out. I want you to, when you ask a question, stand, say your name and what your question is for Phyllis. Facebook land, please like us, please give us hearts, please share our page, please make us popular.
and we will take your questions. Let your friends know if they are actors, they need to be hearing Phyllis Carlisle. Let's take some questions live. I have a question. Go ahead. <laughs> what haven't I said that you really want to know? My God, I'm that good? <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, I have a yes. Um, who, uh, I mean, you mentioned some of the other, some of the actors that you saw coming up, uh, or before they were even coming up, Sandra Bullock, Andy Garcia. Well, I didn't represent some of them. Yeah. She was dating a client. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. Um, who are, when you see some, some young actors, I mean, uh, on TV now, who, it sort of excites you that where you they, they're they're tracking for a career that you want to follow, and just just from your own. Oh, ah, okay. Hmm. Well, I saw a couple of nights ago. This isn't television; it's a movie. But I saw "Call Me by Your Name." Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. And the, the Timothy, right? Oh my God. Mm -hmm. I mean, I I can't wait to see. What he's going to do, because I thought his work was extraordinary. Um, you know, different actors for different reasons. Young, 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 uh, young. Well, I think oh, Bobby oh, Brown. It doesn't have to necessarily be young, but well, um, Bobby Brown. Uh, I think she's amazing. I mean, yeah. even last year before Stranger the, Things, yeah. Really brown even brown. though what's she, she has another name? Too. Yeah, Millie Bobby. Millie yeah. Bobby. <laughs> even though she's now become quite. The first time I saw her on that show, um, I, I went, whoa. <laughs> and then I saw her on an interview, and, yeah. and and maybe this is something interesting. I love to watch the nighttime shows and various things because when you see people, their real their real self, well, their sort of real self. Sitting there and being interviewed, you see so many so many different colors, and you you can form a, a a different sort of point of view about an actor that you don't necessarily have, because their parts can limit them if you if you understand. Yeah. So then when you see them, uh, like James Franco was on a couple nights ago, and I I watched I just watched him, and I formed a totally new point of view about him than I had. I would, I would today think of him for things that I would never, not think of him, would not have thought of him for before. So in that regard, uh, who else? Young, young, young. Oh, I love, oh uh, God, what's his name? Um, he's on, he's Rami, Remy? Oh, Rami, Rami Malek. Malek. Yes, yeah, yeah, I, I love Malek. him. Yeah. So those are three young people that I would track. It leads to a question about interviews. In your own interviewing, what are the turn-ons, turn-offs in an interview when an actor meets with you? Well, if, if somebody's obviously going to be neurotic and a problem, you know, that's it. <laughs> 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 well, it is, you know, you think, oh no, this, I'm going to get 47 calls every two minutes and it's going to be, you know, I'm, I'm not interested in that. Um, but, but you know, I, I, when I did manage, I took a very full-on involvement position in, in <coughs> what I thought that my clients needed from me. And so I'm not saying don't be, I wouldn't be involved, but I am saying there's a pushiness, there's a neuroses, there's a a certain aspect to some actors that 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 makes them vampires, and I like to stay away from that. Yeah, that's generally a good yeah. idea. Uh, do you want somebody to be able to have a, a conversation, to be informed on world event? Do you want to see a mind, a heart, as opposed to I want to be a star? Yes. I thought I. Did. <laughs> I want to be here and amplify, so, yes. But mostly I want to see somebody that's um, comfortable with themselves. What are some of the, if you, that you feel comfortable sharing, some of the battles you fought on behalf of clients? 
Well, I think John with uh, that's going to be a great story. Liaison is a good story. Let's hear that. They, I think we'd love to hear that. Story. Um, they were. Um, I mean, they wanted Mel Gibson. Uh, at the time, he was. You know, this is years ago, so he was very young and handsome, and uh, <coughs> and they wanted a very, very obviously handsome, sexy man to the part. Um, and at the time. The people, the company doing Dangerous Liaisons was Lorimar. Lorimar, well, you may not even know what that is. It was a, it started as a television company, did a lot of TV shows, and then branched out into being a, sort of a mini major that would do films. And they ended up having the rights to Dangerous Liaisons. And it's turned out that for this brief period of time, Bernie Brillstein, who was a manager, and you, you probably know who he was, uh, Bernie Brillstein was running Lorimar, and uh, and he had a right arm, a lady named Eileen Mizell, and I had known her forever. And so um, I call, They wanted John and I wanted to do a, a a movie called Basketball Diaries at the time. I think DiCaprio ended up doing. It. And so we were in New York, and we wanted to have. Um, uh, lunch with Eileen and Bernie uh, about basketball diaries. But in my mind, I had this, I had this little thing to go and I'm going to bring up Dangerous Liaisons. So I, I talked to Eileen about it and uh, she said, yeah, let, I, I get it, I see it, let's talk about it. So at, at lunch, we had a conversation about basketball diaries and Dangerous Liaisons. And fortunately, Bernie was somebody who um, dealt with a lot of talent and understood, you know, that I thought John was more than a character actor. And so at that time, uh, they were willing to entertain the idea of casting John in the part. And, um, you know, we pushed it a little and I got in, I got a, at the time, it was a telegram. <laughs> telegram. <laughs> I got a telegram from Eileen from London saying to me, congratulations, let's make a movie. Which meant John got the part. And so it was this sort of combination of Eileen and myself, really, and working on Bernie's head. Now, if Bernie had been a, a typical studio guy, I don't think we would have pulled it off. But because of his background and understanding actors, yeah, and Eileen was huge. She was huge in the uh, uh, in the process. And Willem Dafoe, you, any story you want to share or how you found him? Well, that was a battle uh, every day <laughs> uh, about about. I thought he was sexy, and nobody else in America did. <laughs> and so we, you know, that was a constant battle about uh, about his true appeal, you know. And I won some and I lost some. But isn't it about how you get around the word no? Yes, you, I mean, yes, you, you, you don't accept no. <laughs> <laughs> That's an inspiring thing for a lot of people. I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't because I, because I believed something. I think you can accept no when you don't truly believe something. But if you believe it and you really know that whether you are or you aren't, you really believe you're right, you're not going to hear no. So every chance I got. <laughs> <laughs> there and then there. Uh, David Goral again, that reminds me of Steve, uh, Steve Martin's quote of, uh, be so good they can't say no. Yeah. Uh, really rings true. Um, you brought up starting to, uh, moving from management into uh, the Financing stuff is—is is that something that you felt came naturally? Because for myself, I'm now creating my own projects, and I'm getting into the production side of things as well. And I'm interested to hear some of your process and how you go about finding these investors. And in, 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 you know, because the producers I've brought on board are saying, "Look." You can go make your movie for half a million dollars. You can star in it, but everybody wants to know who's in your movie. So maybe you bump up one of the supporting characters. You play that, 
get the name, now you've written a two and a half million dollar film that's getting made and getting distributed, so that's the track that we're on now. Well, you're learning. Yeah. That's the journey. For a while, I just, I was not open to it, and then in that conversation, they said, take a step back and think of what you can accomplish by doing that. Absolutely. And so I took six weeks, rewrote the role, and all the producer said was, we can't see anybody else but you playing that. So, it, do you find that you know, just being open and, and, and I guess pliable to those to those kinds of, of changes? Oh, I think open and pliable yeah. is is a good way to be about anything. Yeah. You know, don't I mean? Inflexibility is is really an enemy. Yeah. But I but I but I uh, uh, the the journey is is. I mean, not, not easy. I mean, I go through hell every day. Good to know. Hmm. Does that world come naturally to you, the financing world? That, no, financing doesn't come naturally to me at all. I've done nothing but screw it up. Um, <laughs> That's also good to know. <laughs> I, I, I'm fortunate because it, along the way, after many, many attempts at thinking I knew what I was doing and realizing well, some of it is, it just happens to everybody. And some of it is, you know, you, need, you needed to know so much more than I knew, and I didn't know that. So learning, 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 learning. And then um, along the way, I met somebody, a man that I thought, first of all, I thought a man would be, forgive me women, I thought a man would be more acceptable to the uh, financiers. And, uh, uh, and I met somebody that I trusted and I liked a lot. And so we've been on a journey now for quite a few years and we've kissed some frogs. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I, think, I think we're about, I think we're going to turn to, to, to a prince very soon. And so it's worth it. In the end, in the end, you know, if you get what it is, I mean, this is true for everything we're talking about. In the end, if you get a piece of or all of what it is you've dreamt about and you want, you won. Are you able as a producer to, is there a way to maintain control of the integrity of a project? Not Because I know it can get... I, I, I'm, I think so. I think certainly having your own money is a huge step in that direction. Because when it, it's who has the money. <coughs> That's where the, the decisions and the controls will be. If you're a star, you can interface with that and pull some power too. Some power. But uh, it's who has the money. That's the real, uh, that's why the studios basically get to do what they wanna do and on and on. So just look at who has the money and you'll know who the, where the power is. Uh, so the only reason that I cared about raising financing was to be able to do what we wanted to do. What comes naturally to me is the creative side of it. I love that. Um, and uh, that does come naturally. The rest of it is a nightmare. And, and I'm not gonna pretend it isn't. Um, hi again, here with Scott. Um, piggybacking on both what they were saying, I came back to acting after a 30 year break uh, several years ago. So in one sense, I'm a young actor, in another sense, I am a man of, of my age. And I've been encountering, I, I can see them glaze over, they see the young guys at these manager workshops, and they see the young guys and they're all excited. They take a look at me, even though that I know that I did a good audition, I, I, you know, I know when I'm good and I know when I'm not. I, I can't get a manager to look at me, to take me seriously, because they can't, they don't, I, my, my feeling is, I worked in the agency end of the business, so I know in, in many ways how this works, that they, they, they don't think they can develop me, there's not much place where they can take me, and I know that's not true, but nonetheless, I know people want it easier on both ends. Are how do I get myself to take me seriously? Just, this guy's good, I, I'll take a chance on an older guy. Well, first of all, you have to be right for the part. I want, well, completely, absolutely. <laughs> so it has, to be, it has to be somebody your age. It's not... No, what I'm saying is a manager, how do I get them to take oh. me and, and develop me and, and say, oh, I'll take a chance on this older guy, even though he's not going to pay off and be like a younger kid? I guess have a, uh, you know, have a piece of film that just... Okay. It's 
what you said. Be so good they can't say no. Yeah. All right. It's tough. Okay. Cool. You haven't chosen an easy path. Oh, God, no. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank but you. But there are examples of people who have done it. My question to you is why? I can't live without doing this. What? Doing what? Acting. I mean, acting. when I, when I the, the, there was a hole in my uh, heart when I, uh, before I came back to this, and when I do this, I'm more alive in front of the camera, I'm more alive on stage, I'm more alive when I'm exploring and feeling and prop. I'm alive when I do this. Is it your creativity that it's makes you feel alive, I mean, or is it acting? Well, it's the creativity of acting. It's the whole process. It's it's what can I do to to, to make this alive? What can I do and and finding how, for me, making that character me and and, and, and finding me in the character and and then just expressing this moment, this this emotion, this sense of, of feeling of life, of joy, of anger, of hate. I I I. I I can't even find the words to say what happens when I start to act and why I do it because I just can't not go do to it. theater. Theater. Go to theater. If film's gonna find you, they'll find you there. Right. Please like our Facebook page. <laughs> please give us hearts. Please share us. And we have a question? Yes, I have a question for me. Um, going back to your creativity and what drives you as a producer, I'm curious what stories you feel need to be told right now in the changing landscape of Hollywood, but also in the larger climate of our country and our world, and what projects are you drawn to and fighting for now? Oh, wow, that's a big question. I mean, that's, we could be here all night with that. <laughs> um, well, I'm eclectic in my point of view. I mean, um, my politics would lead me to to want to find something that could speak to what's going on to some in some ways. Um, uh, the, an idea that uh, I probably won't do, but an idea, for example, is that I I would love to see a story about the uh, Washington Post and the New York Times and the battle therein with each other to uh, to sort of break the stories and at the same time uh, expose um, uh, what's going on in our country right now. So um, that's a, that politically that's the kind of story I'd like to. I mean I don't, you know, I think to just uh, take all of it, you can't take it all on but that's a way in my mind to, that you could address a lot of it <clears throat> by, by the battle between them because that exposes a lot. Um, I, I'm a, I like history, so there's, a, there's several projects that, one that we're moving forward right now, uh, that, uh, that has to do with Russia and a lot of Russian history, not, Ru not Russia present day. Mm. Um, there's a project uh, about World War II that I like a lot, and, it, it, and, it, and it's about a man whose family was, it's when Auschwitz was first started, and his family was taken there, and nobody really knew what was going on or what it was. And he got himself arrested and put in so he could find his family. He became a national hero, and a lot of things happened. He eventually was killed, but not in Auschwitz, because he broke out. And it's just this amazing story of the human spirit that, oh, it's just great. Uh, so I'm interested in that. Um, there's a comedy about, uh, a, uh, I think he's about 50, thank you Grant, uh, uh, and, and his inability to commit after a bad marriage and a bad relationship with his daughter and, but it's, it's, you laugh a lot and you kind of cry and you feel and I like the writing and I like the human aspect of it because, uh, um, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, I think people like to watch things about their species and their, <laughs> and their, and their humanness and what make, you know, we all, we all care about pretty much the same stuff. So you just have to hit that core. That's, 
there's a Russian in the front. Well, since you spoke about Russians, it gave me courage to um, ask my question. Yeah, uh, but it's not about Russia at all. Oh. Um, and it's not an um, actor's question either. Um, what would you suggest to an artist who's creating a documentary um, as a producer? Would you go with a production company you know, who has done that before? Or would you start it off by yourself, uh, at least a uh, you know, main idea, and then bring it further to uh, Do you just production. have an idea right now, or is there, are, is there anything that yeah, involved, it's attached an art, to this? Yes, that's it's an idea. It's an idea. Um, it's an idea that's, uh, no, it's not just an idea, we're working on it. Yeah, but I need to know what, I, I need to know, for example, if it, it, it's not Russian, yeah. are you working on an idea that you would be able to shoot in a country or a state that has tax incentive money, for example? Well, it's a um, um, feminism-oriented project. So it's about women in the modern society and uh, motherhood and uh, social issues that come So where with. would you shoot it? Um, we're working on it ourselves right now, and um, we are thinking of taking it to production companies that could, you know, help you. Help. Yeah, us. I think that's a good idea. Uh, this because is, is, is this your first time <coughs> you're working on something, a production? Um, this is my second time working on documentary. Um, first, how did you do the Russian. first one? Um, we just uh, got together with our friends, got an idea, and started to shoot it. And then um, MTV Russia bought it. Can you do that with this one? Yeah, I think so. Well, I mean, I would. What I would do under those circumstances is I would look at uh, tax incentives. In the, where you shoot because that's going to help you with your budget and I would take some meetings with some production companies and see what they have to say and if they feel like they're the right uh, combination for your, your team and them and what they contribute to you and uh, if none of that makes sense do it yourself Okay. <laughs> Again, please like our page. <laughs> please give us hearts. Please share us. This is from Natalie Yatsino. For a Canadian actor, is it more important to create a base in Canada or get a working visa and stay in LA? Have you ever declined an actor based on their visa status? Well, I mean, I'm very pro Canada. Uh, because, uh, first of all, the man I was with is Canadian, and, uh, and, and on a daily basis, I learn more and more, even from what I myself knew, I learn more and more about the advantages that Canada gives to productions. So I, I come from that thinking about the productions. Um, you know, I, I, honestly, if it's, it's English-speaking, Canada, Canada uh, Australia, England. Um, it's pretty connected today. I mean, nobody goes, uh, nobody gets lost if they surface in Canada or England or Australia. I mean, if they surface, we're all going to know about it. And so if you have an easier time of it in Canada and you feel that you can achieve the some film and the beginnings of what you're trying to accomplish, there's actually nothing wrong with that. Um, no, I've never turned somebody down because of their visa status. I've fought for some visas, you know, and that's not easy. And I guess today it's really not. I don't even know what it is today. I don't even think I want to know what it is today. <laughs> um, but, um, um, what I do know is that one of the main things you have to prove is that an American couldn't do the job. And that's a tough one, I think. With, a, with some directors and some people that I represented that, uh, that we, we could argue a pretty good case because it was their project. But, but I think maybe as an actor, that's a little tougher, I don't know. But uh, I see no reason why Canada can't provide 
for you what you need to be as a, a as a beginning actor. Right. Thank you. Yes. Hey, so um, you've discussed a lot about, I don't know if you can see me, um, Luis Alexander. Yeah, hi. Hey, um, so you talked a lot about what we, you know, what you look for in actors. What do you look for, and you mentioned a little bit in partners, uh, life partner, business partners, what's some of the stuff? I guess you've had mixed results with that. Oh, I have indeed. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we could spend I, another hour. I don't think, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a life partner. I've been married twice. Uh, I've been in love more than that, and it didn't work out. So, I, I, love never made me that happy. Infatuation made me happy, but love never. <laughs> um, so, um, I don't look for that so much anymore. Uh, in, in a in a business partner, um, I look for pretty much the same thing I would look in for in any kind of real friendship, and uh, that's just somebody that's real and honest that I can trust. Oh, second part, um, Darren Serafi. Yeah. Yeah, he said hi. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Oh, I'll we'll say hi back. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hi to him too. Yeah. <laughs> yes. As an Asian American actor, I've been told that I ride a fine line of not being Asian enough and not not being Asian enough and being too Asian. And so seeking representation has been a little bit more of a challenge because my feedback has been you are risky. What would your advice be, um, being that the film industry is changing and it is moving forward with diversity and with female representation? Everybody hears that stuff. <laughs> you're not pretty enough, you are, you're too pretty, you're not uh, white enough, you're not black enough, you're not this enough. It, it, you're gonna. You, there's no actor on the planet uh, that doesn't hear this stuff. So, um, what eventually happens is you prevail in whatever manner you're going to prevail. You know, I'm a big believer in taking your creativity and doing with it what works for you. It doesn't necessarily mean acting in the long run. I, I, I'm a case in point. So maybe that's why I think that way. But um, um, you can't let, what's obviously just about one part or this or that, you can't let that, you'll go crazy. You'll be turning yourself inside out every time you walk out the door to do something. And that's non-productive because the only thing that's ever gonna matter is your uniqueness, what makes you you. So you can't be thinking about how you're gonna change that because somebody said you didn't look the way they wanted you to that day. Um, it, it, so for that reason, you have to be a little strong. Getting representation is a, in, in general is a battle today, particularly when you don't have, if you don't have film, if you don't have anything that they can hang their hat on and basically say, okay, I'm gonna take a chance with this person because I think I can actually make money. That's what it's about for them, nothing else. So, um, um, I would say, you know, you're pretty. So I would, so, so, uh, I would say just stay you and keep trucking. Thank you. Okay, we are at the end of this. Let's have some final thoughts. Anything you want to say to the actors? Know how appreciative we are. Oh my God, I've said so much already. I don't know that I have anything, anything left to you know. say. <laughs> I can say about anything. <laughs> well, I can. Huh? I, I think I can say your own oh, career. Oh, I know. Go Did ahead. I answer things? Did you get actual answers? Because yes, I understand yes. that. The yes, you did a very good job. Very important. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So, I think you're an example of determination. Well, I'm a big believer in that. And I think everybody here needs to hear that. Yeah. 
because the obstacles are apparent, are they not? It is the determination. Well, sometimes you have, you're, you're fixated on uh, what you believe is the right thing. You know, I'm gonna be an actor, I'm gonna be an actor, I wanna be an actor, I wanna be an actor. And like in your case, uh, I think very decidedly, if you start building up your background in theater and, and, uh, and with different parts and different things, someone's gonna see you. You can have people come and see you. And I, I absolutely think the thinking is always, if this isn't working, and by working I don't mean, you know, you got told that day you weren't uh, Asian enough or dark enough or pretty enough or whatever. That's just the business. But if it's not working, look, broaden your look. Look out. There's other ways. But determination is at the core. <laughs> and on that note, thank you, Phyllis Carlo.